it's not uh, working here. Are you picking up? No. It's okay. So I still need to use this mic. Okay. Uh, okay, so... We, are, we have uh, mapped our images, right? So all our images are being mapped into a, a tensor of images. We can take um, however, however number of images we want and then we can plot them just to check that everything is working. Um, so uh, the next thing we're going to be doing is to uh, create the image and their labels and put them together into one single data set, right? So, uh, one way, uh, I'll show you one way of doing it right now, and then later in the modeling workshop, we'll have a, another way which I personally think is easier, but this is uh, one, one way you can do it. So uh, again, tf.data.dataset from tensor slicers. So this will now take in the labels. So first we have taken in the whole list of uh, the image paths, and then we map them into the image tensors. Now, what we're going to do is to take the labels, the list of labels, and then we will map them again into a label data set. So we have an image data set and our label data set, uh, put them into a tuple, and then we can zip them together uh, in a zip data set format. So we have a zip data set uh, with our images that we have already uh, re resized and and scale, uh, 160 by 160, three channel image and our label. So, um, so this is uh, basically the pre-processing part of the images. So as long as you have a list of, um, if you start with a list of your folders and the list of your labels, you can zip them together into this uh, tensor uh, zip data set format, and then you can pass them into a model, right? So once one, just to show you that it works. Uh, so we have our image and label zip data set. Um, it, to pass them into a model, we want them to be well shuffled, right? And then we want to batch our uh, data sets. So shuffle and batching is pretty straightforward. Again, so you can just take the data set dot shuffle. Okay, and then. Uh, you can repeat, and then you can do your batching, right? Um, so, so all these are made pretty straightforward. So first you shuffle, then you take the data set, repeat, batch, and then uh, pre here prefetch lets you prefetch the uh, the data. So it makes the computation much more efficient. So so if uh, we don't prefetch, then uh, say the CPU is processing something, and then uh, while while you are you are transforming the data and loading your GPU is idle. Uh, and then when your GPU is idle, your, your, your CPU is running something. When your CPU is idle, your GPU is running something. So, so you take a long time to uh, do the processing. But if you prefetch, then everything is loaded beforehand. Uh, the idle time is reduced. Um, the prefetch. The uh, repeat. Um, the repeat, I actually don't use it in as when you see in in my uh, the modeling workshop later on. I'm not quite sure why uh, the uh, author of the notebook actually put it. Does anybody familiar with uh, this functionality know what what it's used for? No. Yeah, I mean, I guess I can, I could look it up and and maybe let you you guys know. I, I don't really use it, so. Uh, basically, what uh, shuffling and batching is are the, are the main things that we will be using, and that's actually sufficient for the the transfer learning task. Um, so now, um, so now we have an image label data set. Uh, you can do the, the shuffle and repeat actually steps um, with this one helper function. You don't need to do them separately. Right, so so actually you can do the same thing. Uh, image label data set shuffle repeat. Uh, you can batch and prefetch them. Now uh, to pipe the data set into a model is pretty straightforward. So um, so tf dot caras dot applications dot mobile net v two. That's what we'll be going to use uh, be using for this uh, the modeling workshop segment. 
So this is just a preview. And just to show you that um, you can uh, load the, the model, uh, this is what we're going to be using. So mobile net v2, and then with this input shape. And uh, so later on, I'll be covering why uh, you, you want to include top uh, false. Uh, and set this trainable to be uh, false. So this data set will basically be passed into uh, the model. And uh, uh, the you can see, uh, well, la later when we go into the model workshop, uh, you can see how actually the ego mode is really, really powerful for, for this purpose. You can just put the data set uh, into through the model, and then you can see how it transforms the uh, shape of the, the data set. So any questions for the, the pre-processing so far? Yes? At the last clue, where did you put the data? Because I cannot see the... Ah, not yet, yes. Okay, so if you want to put in the data, so what you can do is... Uh, <coughs> So let's say you have loaded data, right? So so this is uh, uh, the model that you have. Let's say I call it base model. You can just pass the image batch into your model. And then, so basically, so let's say I have a batch of size of 32. Okay, you can just pass straight in, and then uh, it tell you that basically your model will take in your image batch, and then so you have a 160, 160, and three channel images, batches of 32. It get passed through the model, it comes out, you have 32 uh, batches, and then you have a five by five by 1,280 uh, tensor. So, so that's what the model uh, does. So in eager mode, you can actually just you know, put in your, your, uh, your tensors and then output, uh, uh, output here. So, um, so we, I'll, I'll be talking about this actually in, during the modeling workshop. So any, any other questions for the transformation? Yeah. So, so uh, if the data set is imbalanced, right, then you will be learning, basically you will be, be, be learning more uh, out for, for this workshop, uh, in the modeling, I'm only looking at accuracy, right? So we don't want to be, uh, if it's imbalanced, then that will totally skew your your metrics. Uh, yeah, so I, I think it still matters, yeah. If it's imbalanced, is it? Or if you if haven't registered, please go to the back and look for our operation team. So yeah, do, if you haven't registered, please go yeah register so that you can get your GCP uh, account for this workshop. Yeah. GCP account only valid for today only. Uh, I think few days. The GCP yeah. account will last until about noon time uh, on Monday. I'm, I'm not sure. I think it follows uh, GTM so that then time zone. Yeah, so you can, uh, after today, you can still go home and play around with your, uh, your workshop materials. Feel free to edit anything. Uh, so, so that's the uh, pre-processing part. Um, the next segment of the workshop is uh, the classification of the images. Do, does anybody need a break before that? No. Okay, so we go straight into modeling. Uh, and anyway, the model will take some time to train, and then I think we can have coffee break while the model is training, right? So, okay, so um, to train our model, uh, we'll be starting from this folder here, modeling workshop. So the notebooks are in modeling workshop, emotion model dot ipython notebook.
So our task is to do facial expression classification. So as you see just now, um, so I've covered one way that you can pre-process the data, right? We, we uh, take the uh, list of paths, list of labels, then we zip them together into the data set. So here I'm actually covering a slightly different way to, to do things uh, again using TF data. So the same things, you load up uh, all the uh, TensorFlow in this, in this case, TensorFlow GPU in better mode. Um, so I have already the image zip files uh, in the, the GitHub that you, you have already cloned. So we can unzip the, the files and then again going through the same steps. Um, in the same, going through the same steps, we get the list of paths, all image paths. And so we want to put, um, so I'm putting basically all this into a function, get image paths. So making use of get image paths, I get all the image, the list of image paths, right? So that's the same, same steps. And then just take a look at the first few ones again. So neutral, neutral, fear. Um, yeah, I don't think, I don't quite think that the labels are actually quite accurate. But again, the second, second image looks pretty happy to me, but it's uh, labeled as neutral. Right, but um, so, and then we have the label names, we map them into the integers, right, the, the integer labels. Um, and then we read the image, we decode the image. So that's a transformation that we'll be doing, right? So um, now, uh, so we put them into the functions, and then we use map. We will be using map to uh, to decode, to pre-process all these images. All right. So, um, so here I'm covering the. This is the part where it slightly differs. So instead of zipping the the image and labels together, so what I'm going to be doing is to uh, directly pass the tuple of uh, paths. So it did in my helper function, so I directly pass my um, list of paths and labels uh, as a tuple into uh, the data set dot from tensor slices. So you can just straight away pass this tuple um, into your data set object. So I'm, and then I'm using my helper function to just split the data set into a train data set, validation data set, and a test data set. So then um, I'll use the map function to map all this into our images, uh, image tensors, and then return the train validation and test set. Right, so that's what I'm going to be doing. So I'll have a train validation and test data set using the split load and preprocess from path label uh, function so you can pass in the split weights in this case we are using a 80 percent 10 percent 10 percent split now um, so again so let's take a few and inspect them looks uh, fine to be and it's transformed correctly right and then um, so here I do a shuffle and batching so for the train batches, I, I do a dot shuffle, dot batch. Uh, for validation and test, I just batch them together. Um, and then if you take one of the sample from train batch, um, so it's got a 30, it's a batch size of 32. Uh, image is 100, 160 by 160 and three channel image. So the next part, um, we'll be actually doing the transfer learning. So we want to pass the data set object that we have through our the model that we have. So um, has anybody done transfer learning before? So just to get a sense of uh, what's the level. So who has not done transfer learning? Okay, most, I guess. So, so those who have not raised, not sure what you've done is transfer learning or not? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so this workshop is actually based on a Google, um, there's a Google Code Lab, uh, and, and there, there are various uh, 
exercises that you can find on Colab also on transfer learning, right? So I'm basing on one of the, the Colab notebooks, uh, but I've modified that to use uh, to do transfer learning on e uh, emotions, which we thought would be more interesting. Uh, so um, we are going to use mobile net v2. The yes, sorry. Yeah, Neil. Okay, so we are going to be using mobile net v2. The reason is that it's really lightweight, and since it's a data to device workshop, uh, mobile net v, uh, v2 has got to be the, the model that we're going to be using. So we want to train a lightweight model so that we can take the model and then uh, pass on to save the model and go to devices and do prediction uh, uh, right on, on the devices itself. So we thought that'd be really cool. Uh, but I'm not sure if Sam talked about it just now. So, but the, so, so there's a small problem with uh, this. So um, the conversion from your safe model um, in, uh, to a TF light that you want to put on your device is not really working for uh, TensorFlow 2 now. So, but since we want to do TensorFlow 2.0 and cover the latest ways to, to do things, then there's a compatibility issue. Uh, the save model that you, uh, we will still be doing uh, uh, saving the model and converting, converting to TF Lite, but the version at, as it is now uh, cannot be used for the devices. So the conversion part is the one, the, the quantization part is the, the part that has an issue at, the, at this moment. Um, but we think that going forward, um, this will be the, the pipeline that, that will be, uh, they'll be using. So the conversion part hopefully will be fixed by the TensorFlow team uh, soon. And then you can use this pipeline and then just train a model, convert it, and then put it to your, uh, put the quantized model onto your device and start uh, serving predictions, right? Um, now to transfer learning, um, so what transfer learning does, uh, for those of you who have not done it before, is basically taking a pre-trained model, uh, in this case, mobile net v2, which is trained on a huge set of images. So, um, so in this case, it's trained on ImageNet. There are 1.4 million images uh, of 1,000 different classes. So we have a huge model that's already been trained on uh, this huge set it's able to do classification um, to a pretty good accuracy um, on 1,000 different classes, right? And it, it's got a whole bunch of different, like, random categories like jackfruit, strange, uh, cats, dogs, and, you know, so different, different things, trees, tools. So it's got a whole bunch of different random stuff, 1,000 different categories. And it classifies, it's able to do classification object de detection um, on these different things, right? Um, now we want to make use of this already pre-trained model, which means it's got a whole bunch of weights already being tuned and accustomed to doing classification, right? And then we take that model, we, we add, we remove its classification layers, we add back on, on top a few more layers that we want to do our own custom classi classification. We train them on our own data set just to get it accustomed to the fine-tuned differences of the emotions and then do the classification on our data set, right? So that's what we, uh, what, what um, transfer learning basically does. Take a pre-trained model, uh, you gotta freeze it so that you only train the few top layers that you, you added yourself. Right? So the first task is a basic um, classification task, um, we will take the base model, right, uh, which is the mobile net v2 model, and we will pass, we'll, so include top, because the false here will basically remove the classification top of image net. So we don't want to classify 1,000 different classes, we just want to tune it to our seven different emotions, right, so we remove the top. Uh, weights from ImageNet. So it's going to take some time to download your base model here, right? Um, and now you can take your image batch with you've already pre-processed in the steps before, pass it to the model, 
and then you can see that this is the output shape, right? So you have, uh, this is your batch size, uh, 5 by 5 and 1,280 uh, different, um, you know, slices, right? So um, we set the model trainable to be false. So we want to extract, for transfer learning, we have to extract what we call embeddings, right? So since the model has already been trained on uh, a large class of data set, then you typically you think that the model is um, has been tuned to uh, visual images, right? To looking at things. Okay. Yes. Thirty one. Actually, the last one, right? The previous step, uh, many people are getting a resource exhausted error. Ah, okay. So you have a resource exhausted error. Um, that's to do with the machine. So the 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 VM that you have. Um, so I get that sometimes too. I think so. If you just do uh, because you've already ran a notebook before, so I think the resources are being already consumed. So so you want to shut down your previous notebooks. So shut down every single notebook first. You can so if you want to shut down, you just right click on the notebook, and then uh, shut down, shut it down. So shut down the uh, this emotion model and shut down also the uh, the, the the previous data preprocessing uh, notebooks. Uh, and then when you restart your notebook, you should be able to run it. So I, I guess, yeah, because we already ran the preprocessing just now, so almost everybody should be getting this error. Uh, but this is, uh, yeah, you can resolve that. If you are new to the TensorFlow API, we strongly encourage you to run everything from start and try to read through. If you have any question, you can ask the mentors on site. Uh, if you're already familiar with the API, then uh, that's probably fine. The next section is probably more interesting. Okay, so um, to to extract the embeddings, uh, which is basically uh, you know, so we have a, a whole set of features that are the model has been trained on on all these images. It recognizes uh, it changes all these images, transforms them into a lower dimensional representation, right, of the of the visual world, right? So this lower dimensional representation uh, we call uh, embeddings, right? So we take this, uh, we freeze the model by setting trainable to be false, um, and then we want to use this base model to basically just, as what we did, pass the images through the model and get uh, for each image that uh, every image, uh, every batch gets transformed into this uh, embedded representations, right? Um, so if we take a look at the model summary, you see that, um, okay, so the input layer is 160, 160, and three channel. That's what we transform our our data into. Um, the output, it's got a whole bunch of uh, uh, layers. And the output is a uh, 5 by 5 by 1, 2, 8, 0 uh, shape. So that's what you saw. Um, and since we've frozen all the parameters, all 2 million of them, nothing is trainable at the moment. All, it, all this model does right now is to take in images and pass out the, the, the transformation. It does not change any weights. Right? So, and then we, what we're going to do is to add on our own classification layers now, since we've already removed the classification top. Uh, we want to add in a global pool, global uh, tf.keras.layers, global average pooling 2D. So um, what this does, uh, you can see it immediately. Right, just by creating this layer, you can immediately pass your feature batch through, and you can see what it does to your uh, uh, your your image batch, so it transforms your image batch into a uh, 32. So it's batch 32, and uh, 1280 uh, shape, right? So basically, we've compressed the we've uh, pulled all the five by five uh, together into one single uh, number, 
right? So since it's five by five by one two eight O, and then we pull all them together into just one thousand two hundred eighty uh, uh, features, right? So um, now if we take uh, again, we can uh, we are going to add in the final layer, which will do the classification. So what? Um, after pulling, we have a uh, one down two hundred eighty. Uh, we are going to add a dense layer with uh, seven outputs since we have uh, seven different classes to predict. Then uh, with a softmax activation. Uh, so now if we pass through our pass our feature batch average through this layer, you see that it just output outputs our batch with the seven different uh, classes. So uh, the final model is basically a frozen base model that just does the uh, extracts and embeddings for us. And then these are more, uh, the layers that are free for us to, to tune, to train, right? So, um, so we need to compile the model in order to fit it. So we compile the model with a RMS prop optimizer and then a sparse categorical cross entropy since we have seven different classes uh, and, and our output labels are integers instead of uh, being one hot encoded. So if you have one hot encoded um, labels, then you can just use a categorical cross en entropy. But if you have uh, integer labels, you should use the sparse categorical version. Um, and then if you look at a model, model summary, this is a frozen uh, one. And then you have a pooling with no parameters. And your dense layer, which is uh, 8,962 um, uh, parameters that are trainable. So your model actually only has uh, so this about 9,000 uh, parameters to be trained on. So that's uh, 1 to 8 times 7 plus 7, right? So, um, so these are, um, so, so let's take a look at our, so I'm just going to, calculate the number of samples that we have. So the train, training sample, validation, and test sample. Um, and then let's look at the initial uh, evaluation of the, uh, the data. So let's say I pass in um, model.evaluate. I pass in validation batches. Uh, initially, the accuracy is about 10%. And so we have uh, about 10, 11% accuracy. So we are going to feed the model. So we pass in the train batches uh, with uh, 10 epochs, right? And uh, so this is our validation batches. And then let it train. So it's going to take some time to, for the model to finish training. I, I think somewhere of the order of 15 minutes or so. Uh, so you probably should see the accuracy. I mean, you will see it going up, but it probably would not go too high. Uh, in this case, up to say 30%, that, that's all I got. Um, that, that was not unexpected. So anyway, I, I, I think, so the, the images, uh, the labels are kind of a bit weird to me, right? And then also um, we are, using about only 500 images per class. So that's quite a small data set, actually, to, to be honest. So I'm not, uh, since MobileNet is trained on like different entities, right? You've trained on tools versus trees versus uh, humans uh, versus different types of animals. So these are all completely different things. So in order to learn the subtleties of uh, emotions, um, I, I don't think that is uh, that is prob going to get a very good accuracy, at least with a very simplistic model architecture like that. We just added uh, a few uh, layers on top, right? So, so that's probably going to be the accuracy that you're going to uh, you'll be getting about thirty thirty percent or so. Um, so, I think the model will take some time to run. Uh, so maybe before I go on to the next uh, part where we evaluate the model and then do the fine tuning portion. So maybe should we have a coffee break? Show of hands. Yes. Okay. 
So let's take a coffee break while the model is training, uh, or tea break, or toilet break, and then we'll come back in about 10 minutes to see the model results. <laughs> Okay, so um, let's continue with uh, looking at your model and evaluating the accuracy. So, so just to recap, what you've just done just now is to do a model dot feed, right? and then you basically pass in your training and validation batches. Right? So these are your the TF data sets. Uh, you pass in into pass it into the model. Uh, fit it and then install it in history. So that's a, a really useful way for you to evaluate the metrics later. So you using um, the history object, you can basically plot your training and validation accuracy and loss. Right, so um, the accuracy as I said, it's not that great. So for training, you manage to get about 45% accuracy. Uh, and then for validation, you get about maybe 30% accuracy, right? Anybody got more than that? No. Yeah, I don't, I don't think so, right? So, um, so recognizing images on a whole bunch of like 1,000 different classes, not quite the same as recognizing uh, human emotions and our data set size is really small, right? So we are going to expect like not great uh, accuracy, but 30% is uh, okay, right? May maybe like at the level of a little baby, you kind of uh, recognize uh, human emotions with some lesser accuracy. Um, now, um, so we have trained for 10 epochs and then that's what we managed to get. So the model is still learning something, not that great, but okay, that's, that's Still okay. So, but now generally, when you do when we do transfer learning, there are uh, the next step after you have trained your basic classifier is to do fine tuning. Now, so so fine tuning allows you to bump up that accuracy to to a little more, usually a few more percent than what you can get with just your basic uh, classifier, which basically is just training on the top layers that you've added, right? The base model is frozen. Um, in fine-tuning, um, if you have a big enough data set, you would want to fine-tune and you unfreeze a few more layers at the end, and then you get those weights to be trainable as well. So, um, so just a note of caution, you should only do this after you did the basic uh, transfer learning first. So you let the layers uh, recognize the classes first, then you unfreeze the layers, and then you do the fine tuning to let it uh, tune. Otherwise, um, you know, it's just trying to randomly classify. And if uh, if uh, and and you want you want to keep so basically you want to keep that top few layers that is already accustomed to your data set, and then you get uh, propagate down to the the next few layers that you're going to unfreeze. Right. So so here we are going to unfreeze the whole base model for now. So set base model dot trainable equals true. Okay. And then uh, you say that okay I'm going to fine tune at one hundred layers onwards. So you've seen the base model has got a whole bunch of layers, very long list of layers. We will start from hundred onwards and then for each layer in base model dot layers <coughs> you um, and you will want to set trainable to False. Okay, so basically you train you you f you freeze all the layers up to layer one hundred. It's already unfrozen, and then now you freeze the first hundred layers, uh, right? So, um, so from hundred onwards, you are going to get the trainable layers, including your classifying layers that you add on top. So you compile the model again uh, using the same uh, optimizer and loss and metric then now the model summary is going to give you a much larger number of trainable parameters. You're going to train on 1.8 million parameters. So these weights are going to be tuned and accustomed to your, uh, to your emotion data set. OK, 
Okay, so um, we are going to train our model again. And this time round, it's going to train for another 10 more epochs, and it's going to take some more time. So uh, we won't be waiting for, in the interest of time, we won't wait for it to finish running. I'll just show you the results first. Uh, and then we can go for lunch, and then you can come back and play around with your model. Right, so, um, so after 10 more epochs of fine tuning, you bump 30% accuracy up to 37% accuracy. So that's okay, a bit, a bit better. So this is uh, our metric. So this is the first 10 epochs where you, it's not um, uh, it, it, that where we didn't fine tune the model. So after that, we start fine tuning the model, and then we get. You can see that the the accuracy uh, goes up just by a little bit. And here, the the training actually goes way off, starts to deviate from the validation by a, a lot. Uh, you, we are getting like 80, 90 percent accuracy on the training data set alone. So apparently, it's recognizing emotions very well on the training data set alone, right? Uh, so we are totally. Uh, we are we are totally overfitting the data right here. We have uh, one one point eight million parameters, and we overfit on like five hundred images per class, right? So uh, not doing great. But so say if you have a larger data set, then this is something that is worth trying, right? To to get that few percent of accuracy on top. Uh, if you have huge data set, then you want to first train your model. The uh, first, do the transfer learning and then fine tune that uh, later to get more accuracy. Um, so now we are going to do a, a prediction on our. Uh, let's let's take a look at our predictions. So we have our different emotions. So on our, I'm I'm predicting. So uh, I use the model to make predictions on my test set. And this is the confusion matrix that I, I, I got. Uh, so um, apparently, three is the one that is being classified pretty well. So happy is a pretty recognizable emotion by, by the model. Um, the rest of the emotions are not doing too great, especially disgust. So disgust is probably quite uh, difficult to recognize. Uh, Maybe it's representative of how humans look at things too. I don't know. Might 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 be not so easy to recognize. But happy is definitely uh, one of the first things to to that you recognize, right? And and I know as a new father uh, that the the new the baby recognizes your happiness very quickly. You smile at the baby, and then he's pretty pretty quickly he starts to smile back at you. Uh, other things not not so not so quick, right? So. Uh, now, um, then for the other, let's say five uh, set, you see a whole bunch here, right? So, so many other um, emotions get somehow uh, mapped into a set emotion, right? So you, you can see that in the, uh, our sample that we're going to try out. So this might be fun for you to play with later on after you've trained your model. Um, so you can basically go on the web, download a bunch of facial expression images or a bunch of faces, uh, upload it to the sample image path folder here. Right, so you, if you go into image sam uh, sample images, I've got a bunch of uh, sample images for you to test on. You can upload your image just by clicking on this button here. So upload uh, your image that you download from the web and then you run this segment here, which will uh, unpack all your images into a list and then do a transformation. So here are my sample images. So I got from the web. So this is uh, Pablo Escobar, I think. It's, I've even gotten a, a cat here. So a cat, this is a uh, Jack human, right? Hugh, sorry, Hugh Jackman. Uh, and then I have a Mona Lisa and then the grumpy cat. Right, so let's see what the model recognizes. So it does uh, its predictions, and then I'm getting happy, neutral, sad, sad. So sad is, as I said, many emotions somehow get mapped to sad, right? Uh, but so the, we've, I've got the first two, happy and neutral. 
Happy is okay. Happy is a uh, good. Sad, not quite, but it's a cat. So I, I know this is. So I've got uh, on on one of my training runs, uh, it managed to recognize this as angry. So I thought that was pretty interesting. So the model is able to to predict on a different emotions on different species as well. Um, and then Hugh Jackman. So this is sad. Supposed to be sad, which. Under some circumstances, might be sad, right? Um, I mean, it could be a very, you know, desperate cry or something, right? So it also depends on how your label, um, your label data set is uh, like. And then you've got sad here, and then uh, Mona Lisa is sad, Grumpy Cat is sad. Right, so, so that's uh, something you can play with after you, your model is is trained. Um, so. This is the next part that uh, we've been talking about. So you can save your model file after you finish training it. You just do a uh, so a tf dot save model dot save. That will basically just save your model into a uh, 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 this saves it into a dot pb uh, file, and you can also do a model dot save and just save into a hdf five. Uh, model format um, and then for the purpose of devices you can do a conversion from uh, your let's say my, my emotion.h5 file and then I do a tf like convert in command line and just save it to convert it to uh, uh, output tf like file so this is going to be used uh, can be used for serving on uh, devices uh, but this is also exactly the part where I said that the, for TF2 and this TF like convert part, the things are still not worked out yet. Um, at the moment, uh, this would work. This would probably work well on TF uh, 1.13. Uh, but if using if you are using TF2, um, this would probably not work on your devices. So you can try to repeat the whole thing again in 1.13. Um, maybe you have to modify it a bit of the way that you you do your model uh, model building, um, and then you convert the file. Then this should be able to work on uh, your device, right? So, um, so here you can do a conversion, um, load it to your device, and then do a prediction. Right. So, so basically, in summary, uh, we have done transfer learning. So you transfer learning, you have two, two basically two stages. First stage, you freeze everything in your base model, add a few top layers, classify, just to get the top layers accustomed to your fine-tuned data set. And then you fine-tune that later by unfreezing a few more layers, and then get the model to bump up the accuracy a few more percent. Right? So there's the two stages of uh, transfer learning. Uh, word of caution, if you have a small data set, then you would almost definitely overfeed. Um, so, but the model seems to also be able to generalize to maybe other other images. So it'll be fun to see what you guys try on the model later. Um, and then, yeah. So if you want to surf on your device, 1.13 is the way to go for now. But 2.0, or well, we hope in a few more months that the, the it will be compatible, um, and then you can. Uh, load the model TF light into your devices. Um, so the challenge for you guys is probably to uh, try out on different images and see if you are able to get better accuracy than 37% by maybe adding some more layers and having more complicated architectures on top of the base model. Right? So you can totally try uh, to add a few more things and see whether you can get uh, much better accuracy. Right, so, so that's the end of the modeling workshop. Any questions? <coughs>